Let's look at drawing our steel shapes in CAD. This is our assignment and here are the shapes we're going to be drawing. Now uh, some of these shapes have fillet radii in them and those those radii vary uh, by manufacturer. So I'm suggesting in the assignment here are some sizes you can try. Um, see if they work for you. Also, if you go to work in a place where you're going to be um, using structural steel shapes, you will be glad to have a block library of some uh, end views of these shapes that you've already drawn. So may I suggest that you consider making blocks for yourself that you can store once you have drawn these. Now you don't have to, that's not, not required for the assignment. I'm just saying you might like it if you do. And this says uh, on some sheets um, create viewports where you can show the shapes that you drew. And I'll show you what I did. So here's, uh, here's a sheet where I didn't use a title block and you don't have to either if you don't want to. You can use the class title block or not as you wish. Um, so I decided I'd put them on a plain piece of paper. I made three different viewports so that in each one I could, uh, you know, zoom in and uh, see the things that I drew. And under each piece of steel I put the uh, official label for that thing. So there's a, a portrait. Here's where I did one, um, you know, landscape. And here's, I ran out of space, so there's my other two 8-inch wide flange things. All right, so back to model space. So that's that. Let's look at this uh, C4 by 5.4 channel. That one might be a bit tricky. So let's go over here and I have inserted a page out of the Far West Steel catalog into my drawing just so it's easier to refer to. Now C4 by 5.4. C4 means it is 4 inches high. So I'm going to start by making some lines. I guess I should get on the object layer. I'm going to make some lines that are four inches apart. And I like to turn on ortho, which is this button down here, or as it tells you, F8 will turn it on. So I'll just draw a line. I don't know how long that is. And I will offset offset that line or O for offset. I will offset that four inches. Click offset. Okay, that's how high my channel will be. Now I think I will lay in the flange width and according to this the flange width for this particular size is 1.58. So I will draw a line. There's the back of my channel. Now I'll offset 1.58. There's where the front of my channel will be. Now, and I think I'll trim that just so it looks tidy. There. That's the size of my channel. Now the web thickness is 0.18, so I think I'll lay that in right away. Offset point, oops, 0.18 offset. Okay. And now I'm going to I need to figure out where where is the middle of my flange so I can draw that flange thickness in there. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, 
I think I'll turn off ortho now. Let's check our OSNAP settings and make sure that we do have midpoint, extension, perpendicular. Yes, we want all those. OK. I'm going to draw a line right in the middle of my thing here and go perpendicular. Now that line goes from the web of my channel out to the toe of my channel. Why do I care? Because I need to find the midpoint of my flange. So I'm going to go, I have found the center of my boxy thing here, and I'm going to put that line perpendicular to the outside of my um, flange. Now this thing has a nine and a half degree slope. Oik. Now I could start typing line and try and figure out how to type the, the angle for the line. That's the old timey way to do it. Line, first point, and then I think you go uh, at some length angle nine and a half. I think that works. Yeah. So that's that's the typing way to do it. A handier way to do it is with the dynamic cursor. And notice my dynamic cursor is not on. So I want to turn it on because it's really going to help. And that is this icon thingy right here. It's a picture of a box next to a cursor. Dynamic input mode. If you don't have that button visible on your taskbar, go over here to the hamburger stack. That's the list of options, you uh, you know, um, icons that you could load. And you want dynamic input with a check mark next to it. Mine has a check mark next to it because I already put that button on my screen. So I'm going to turn that on. Click. OK, now when I go to draw a line, that, that cursor thingy is on. And I want to draw a line at an angle of nine and a half degrees. Now, if I tip my line downward and do nine and a half degrees, it'll go nine and a half degrees uh, below the line. If I tip my line upwards, it'll go nine and a half degrees above the line. Who cares? It doesn't matter because we, we're going to do two lines. I'm just saying. Um, I don't know what length this thing is, so instead of entering a number, I will just tab, not enter, but tab, to get from that box over to my angle box. See, now the angle box is lit up, and now I will type 9.5, nine and a half degrees. There is my nine and a half degree line. Now, that line is going to be the flange up here. And that flange, let's check how thick is that flange. It's 0.296 at the midpoint right here. So check this out. I'm going to go offset one more time and an offset distance of 0.296 according to the table. And I'll offset that top line that is the thickness at the midpoint right there. Now I'm going to move my slopey line. I don't know how long it is or where it's supposed to go, and I kind of don't care because <laughs> I'm going to just grab it. This is the Robertson stupid way of doing things, but it works. So I'll grab it and I'll snap it to that point that is at the at the middle of my flange width and at a distance of 0.296 that I just offset down. So there is where my flange is going to go. Now I don't need this line anymore. Now I'm going to trim my thing with the trim command or type TR for trim. And if I hit all, if I hit enter right now, it'll just 
make every single line in my drawing a cutting edge. I'd rather save some time, so I'm going to select objects to be my cutters. I'm going to select that outside edge and that uh, inside of the web, enter. And now I will hit the line I want to trim. Yay, look at that. I think I'll, well, note now I'm going to mirror this line. I don't have to go through this whole drawing thing again. I will mirror or type MI for mirror. There's the one I want to mirror. And I want to use the middle of my channel. Well, look, I already have a line at the middle of my channel. So I'll just use that for my mirror line. That end and that end. And it says erase source object. No, I don't want to because I want to keep both of them. There. Now I have another flange down here. Now I will go trim again. And this time I will just hit enter because uh, uh, it's fine. I'm willing to use all my lines as cutters. And I will click there and there. Oh, hooray. Now I have what's starting to look like a channel. I'm going to erase these lines out of here. Oh, and one more trim thing. TR, trim, enter, and I'll just trim out that guy. Now, it suggests here, and by it I mean me, I'm suggesting that you try a fillet radius of a quarter of an inch for the inside and three sixteenths for the outside. However, I think that won't work. Uh, so we'll the, the inside will work. So here's the fillet and I'm going to type R for radius 0.25. That's my fillet radius. Select first object, select second object. So that's looking good. Enter to bring it up again. That one and that one. So those are looking good. I don't think 3 16 is going to work for the toe, however. Here's why. If I measure that toe with the distance command, and I like to type DI to get that distance command, from there to there is point, basically point 0.179. It's less than 3 16 So I think I had better do a smaller number for this fillet radius. I might try R. Uh, I might try a fillet radius of 0.15. And let's see if that works. Yes, that, that will work. Uh, and here's why uh, the other one wouldn't work. If I do a fillet radius of 0.188, I'll just show you what would happen if I did that. And then I click this line and that line. Oh, it did work. Well, okay, I lied. Sometimes it won't fill it. It'll say, oh, I'm sorry, the distance is too small. So looky there. There's my channel. And now I will label it with my, uh, my C4 just like I, well, I'll show you my model space quickly before we run out of time. So here are all our, here are all my, uh, sizes that I drew. And uh, here are all my labels. Oh, don't look. Uh, there's my C4 by 5.4. And now here's where I'm putting it in my piece of paper with some viewports. There you go.